Welcome back, battle brothers and sisters, to our continuing adventures of Winter's Fury, the Northern Raider tale. Um, today, we're kind of, I don't want to say we're stuck, but we've got a couple of decisions to make. The first one is uh, the age-old question, where to go. Uh, I came here, I actually, since I had a decent amount of money, uh, I went to the armorer here and I bought a couple of these male hauberks just to a little extra protection for my more important guys. Uh, they didn't have any more. I would have bought another hauberk or two if I could. They were selling for 1500 but which you know, isn't a bad price at the armor shop for something like that. I've got the money. Um, I could have bought a thing of riveted or reinforced mail, but that's awfully expensive. I don't have quite that much expendable income. So this one's not too bad, but we're going to show some restraint. No one really to hire. So the question really is, do I come down here? Do I continue looking for contracts or do I head north? I'm kind of tempted to come up here, see how tough this location is, and then maybe do some raiding. But realistically, the more responsible option, usually in the beginning and mid-game, is uh, taking contracts. It, it boosts your renown, gets you more money. It's a little more controlled environment. You know what's going to happen. Um, so it's probably the more responsible thing. Really, once you hit late game and your party is a lot stronger and you've got a good amount of income coming in, uh, then you can explore a little more find locations and yeah I maybe do raiding if that's what your thing is I mean looking on the map here I don't see any real caravans well, there's one but it's probably going away that way so I mean as tempting as it is as fun as it is I think I might be we might do some quests or some contracts first down here because I think I came from the west or the east and came over so we'll head down to Thunstetten and then maybe the southern towns there's this place over here, but I don't think I could actually see what was in it. I believe it was human footprints coming out of it. So I may check that out uh, just for the hell of it. But we'll pause now and uh, we'll see if anything interesting comes up. So actually a couple of things of interest. First of all, we get this little uh, hint of... Well, it's not really a hint. It's letting us know that... Um, the uh, the crisis that we're going to have is the undead. The ancient undead are rising up. I mean, you can read it. It's great. But we kind of had indicators earlier, like I mentioned, about seeing ancient undead and undead wandering around together. So we know it's going to be undead. Uh, there will be some quests, and you'll see more groups of ancient undead working with regular undead. And eventually we should see, especially in the noble houses... Um, quest to put down the undead culminating potentially in a um, a major quest or a major contract to maybe stop them from besieging a city now um, we don't have it as an ambition eventually it'll become an ambition to stop the undead crisis and it'll say uh, whether the undead are winning or losing or how close we are to defeating it and at that point, we can actually complete the crisis and be successful by just raiding undead encampments and just destroying undead parties wandering around. You don't actually have to take, if I recall correctly, we'll see, but uh, the actual fights, like the contracts to do it, the, the tougher, more formal things. You can just wander the countryside slaying undead and ultimately be successful. So it's kind of nice in that regard that you have a little freedom on how you want to do it. And realistically... If there's an undead crisis going on, if you want, you can ignore it. And you can just go ahead, do regular contracts, wander, look for legendary items, do whatever you want. And it'll, I think, if I recall correctly from other ones, sometimes it'll just self-resolve. I mean, eventually the crisis is over, the military units patrolling around have killed enough undead, and it goes away. So, uh, same with, like, the noble houses, the humans are fighting each other. We, I mean, there are times if you just ignore it, it'll, it'll self-resolve. Uh, also, on a related note, uh, I don't know if it was foolish or not, but this place was afraid they're going to be raided by, well, raiders. So I took the Two Skull quest. I figured I could camp out while I'm waiting and quickly repair my stuff. And, okay, I mean, his stuff, he's a little hurt. 
but he's in good shape. He's in good shape. He's decent. I've got other sets of armor I can give him. He's equipped. So yeah, uh, overall it's not too bad. However, it's nighttime and we just got notification that it's not bandits, it's undead coming. So I have to kind of patrol around, see where the undead are. Uh, there's a necromancer, which makes them infinitely more difficult. Now, the good news is, ultimately, there's only one fallen hero, and even with the necromancer boosting them, only the fallen hero is the real danger. Um, I don't know, we might be able to delay him a bit and wait till day so that he can be a little bit more effective. Um, but we can give those guys pole arms. We need to whip out some scramble saxes. Um, yeah, even with the heavier armor, he's still one of my most accurate. He is my most accurate, and he's got plenty of fatigue. This guy will need one as well. I mean, really, even my dudes on the line are getting pretty good. Oh, I gave these guys... So these guys have the cleaver perk. So I gave them cleavers as backup weapons, just in case things got close, but not required anymore. So we can give cleavers to these guys. This guy. Let's give him a slightly more defensive shield. He's up to 44, and I believe he has dodge. So he should be pretty tanky. He doesn't have underdog yet, unfortunately, but Anybody else have damaged armor? No. Oh, yeah. Someone had a helmet. And it's still 212. It's still plenty of armor. These guys don't have to worry about piercing because it's all armored Veter gangers. And he can go to... I thought I had a spear somewhere. Maybe I'm missing it. Here we go. So he has a better chance of hitting. All right. Should be good to go. Um, yeah, I was kind of tempted. I was thinking about bringing a hammer out there to deal with the ancient undead, or the, uh, the fallen hero, but I think it's only one. I think we'll be able to handle him. And he's burning that, but it is almost daytime. Come on. Okay. I don't think he's burned that place down completely. It's day, so my archer will be a little more effective. <clears throat> And there's only 11 of them. So then the big question is, will it be a second group or not? And the Fallen Hero. So the Fallen Hero has a long sword. Not the most dangerous weapon. Um, there are m much more damaging two-handed weapons. But it does give a bonus to hit, which is partially annoying. More importantly, it can do a split where it hits two spots in a line which can threaten my guys in the back. So you have to be careful of wherever he ends up. Uh, we don't let him get somewhere where he can hit one of my back rank guys. And all these guys in the front are pretty mediocre. All right. We'll wait again. That's fine if he wants to boost that guy. Uh, we can wait on shooting. Actually, I probably should have moved these guys all up a space. Just to keep this guy from hanging off the end here. Um, well, got a, got a swing. So, we'll step up and try to hit that guy. Good. Uh, yeah, I can go again. That'll let him decap attack him. And then, look at that. Quite a few guys got their... Morale boosted, which is always handy. Um, he's going to have boosted initiative, unfortunately, but what are you going to do? He's pretty hurt, though. All right. And defend. Hold up that corner. This guy is working his way around, which I don't have any cleavers. Now, again, if I decapitate the fallen hero, he can still be risen by the uh, necromancer or he can come back on his own and i believe on when it's like the undead crisis i think there's an increased chance 
for things to rise. And if any of my guys die, there's a chance they'll just spontaneously rise up as zombies as well. I, I don't anticipate that being a problem in this particular fight. It's not, I don't think, going to be that difficult. But um, it's good to know. Let's... Mm. Yeah, whatever. I mean, because I'm going to kill him with the spear anyway. Um... No, that decapitation didn't work, but that one did. Um, put a fish shot in him, I guess. Okay, that's good. His shield wall did work. Um, let's go for it. There, problem solved. And maybe the fallen hero. Okay, so he is now in line for that. And I want to make sure if he puts um, that little puppet master boosting ability on him, uh, he can A, split, he might be able to split twice, or he could whack this guy a couple times. So this guy, if he gets boosted, is a, is a real danger. Let's do some regular attacks up here. Uh, he's ready to be decapitated. That's good. Go ahead and boost the chump with a stick. <laughs> I mean... He still did some good damage, I suppose. I shouldn't be making too much fun of him. Uh, just stay alive against that guy. All right. We've got quick hands. We've got the whip. Yeah, yeah, I was worth a shot. And again, we moved down, so he's not in line for this split attack. And he did boost him. Which I was a little worried about. Uh, shoot that guy. Kill him. <clears throat> I said kill him. Hit his helmet twice. Kill him. All right. Um, let's, I mean, I, the problem is I don't want to come down here and have him swing, especially with this guy who's pretty roughed up. Yep, so he swung twice. Thankfully, his uh, shield wall was enough to keep him safe. But we're going to have to... Yeah, he's going to keep boosting that guy. Whoa! Now he's a bigger problem. And, oh, damn it! <laughs> he, he, he got bumped up, so now he can split and hit this guy. Uh, hopefully he can't hit him twice. Actually, okay, I don't want those guys to get hurt. There we go. Now it's not a problem. Um, sure, hit that guy. Did a little bit of damage to him, so he can decapitate him more reliably. That's why I like whips. They're handy for taking care of those little problems. Now I can get to work on him. Keep defending. Put some shots into him. Decapitate, move in. Uh, step away, and you can disarm, and let's just beat on this guy a little bit. All right, we got rid of his body armor at least. This guy actually is not, with his damaged armor and stuff, is not ideal to run in here, but I mean, he could probably take the necromancer at least. He's shield walling, that's all I want him to do is just hold this guy up. I mean, eventually this guy will have taunt, and then he could just deliberately taunt the guy and draw the draw the attacks. Yep, and he's just flailing around. Done. Keep defending. One of these guys. So he's already gone. He'll step down, and I'll wait. This guy will try to whip first. And if he can disarm him, then this guy can pull the pole arm out and hit him. No, he still can't go. So you still just keep pouring the fire into him. Um, you can work your way around up there. Missed him twice. All right. Did not disarm. I don't... Whoa. I don't usually break away. That's a little uh, surprising, actually. All right, we're going to risk it. 
We're going to see if I get punished if this guy comes over and hits him. I mean, this guy is a... These guys are... Well, this guy is my best fighter. This guy is not bad. Whoa! Like that. I knew it! I'm going to get punished. All right. Yeah, he can't block anymore. Let's try to kill some people, I guess. Um, let's just try to kill people. I think he's hurt enough. We can finish him, probably. We finish them both. That's good, because we kind of need it. That guy is in trouble. He needs help. We have to hurry and save Rupert, the dude. Oh, he's... He can't even defend himself. Actually, that may have been a big, big mistake setting him in. Oh. Uh, all right. Well. And he's back. He got hit again. All right. Well. He has at least survived a little bit. All right, the, the relief column has arrived. Oh, he's gonna bleed hard. He's too hurt. I'm actually surprised. Necromancers aren't great fighters, so I don't know why he's hitting so much. All right, let's, uh, man, he's got a cut artery and he's bleeding a whole shitload. We're gonna wait. If I need to, I'll disarm this guy. I'm curious. Uh, I don't know if this guy... I don't think this guy has a bandage. Alright, so... Um, I don't care about this guy at all. I just have to kill him. <laughs> he has a bandage. Uh, let's wait with him. Let's. He's too tired. I wanted to shield wall this guy away, but I can't. What's he losing? He's losing five and three. He's going to lose eight. Okay. Now. Ah, good. We can rotate here. So you don't have to... I could just walk away and, and provoke an attack and hope to get away. Uh, but this works better to prevent him from bleeding out next turn. And... Yep. And we're good there. And... All right. That was a near thing for my dude... Probably, you know, I even talked it out loud. I knew it was a dumb move subconsciously. I thought, well, you know, what's the worst that could happen? He's in good shape. Thankfully, there was not a second group of those guys coming through. So um, I didn't get punished too much for my, uh, we'll say stupidity. That's, that's probably the simplest way to put it. I was looking for a more eloquent word, but just, you know, stupidity is probably the best way to go. All right. Well, it was a near thing. We won. We got the quest done. We've got a guy who survived with six health. I mean, we had a guy who survived with one health last time. So, uh, you know, these things happen. Uh, all right, we'll see what happens next. So, <clears throat> you know how you make plans. And then, then uh, as things change, you find yourself doing what you wanted to do to begin with, despite what your plan was. I uh, came down here to Dahab. They didn't have any good quests for me. I started wandering up this road, planning to come over here to Tarwa. And as I was coming down here, I thought, you know, let's just check over here and see if there's anything of interest. There was a, a location, but I couldn't tell what was in it. It's like, yeah, I don't feel like risking it, going in there and then potentially running away and losing renown. So I continued some more. Found this place. It's, a, I think, a legendary location, the Sunken Library. 
Um, that's one of the <laughs> that's one of the major battles for some uh, legendary loot. I've never actually completed this one. It's got a lot of phases. Um, if you're going to consider going into this place, you probably need to read up on it because it's not not an easy fight. Uh, which means I was not prepared for that. So I continued along, came up here. Uh, this had a lot, a little too much for me to tackle. Continued along. This place I couldn't see, wasn't sure it was there. And I was like, well, you know, I'm here anyway. Maybe I'll just wander up this road and raid these northern guys a little bit. Which is, of course, exactly what I was telling myself not to do, but here we are. So, as I come up, <sighs> nine wolf riders. Nine wolf riders. Can I take nine wolf riders? I've adjusted my people a little bit because I think I'm going to fight them. Again, against my better judgment. Everyone's healed up from my last fight except for the guy who was on like eight health, right? He's still a little roughed up. So, I gave him a polearm. Although, realistically looking at it, what I probably should do is give him the better shield and a arming sword. That's probably actually, he's probably a little safer this way. If he's got the, the pole arm, the wolf riders are gonna move around the flanks. They're gonna get in contact with him. He's gonna get roughed up. So I gave him the, not the best armor I had, but better instead of 110, 115, uh, you know, something, and a decent helmet. Okay, so, two pole arms. Pole arms are nice, to, and these guys, they do have quick hands, so they can switch over to these swords and do some damage to whatever comes near them. In fact, seven defense and 74, 11 defense and 73. So, I think we're in good shape here. Uh, so, oh, we can give some of these guys better armor too. What is this, 105? 10 whatever you can get a better helmet what is this 105 125 sure all right so i think we can handle them uh, i left this little spot in here so if they want to run in here these dudes can switch he can again he's quick hands he can switch to he can switch to that <laughs> and hit him hard that guy's got a sword. Good. I think we're good. This is not going to be an easy fight. And I may be stupid for taking it, which I keep telling myself. It probably means I am, but I don't know. You can't run from every fight, right? And as we've seen in previous fights against these wolf riders, they're just going to keep maneuvering around the flank. I think... Actually, it'd be nice if I get this guy up on the high ground here. Um... And let's look. You know, a little bit, not very much blocking terrain. Not a huge amount of high ground. But if we fall back, I think we'll be okay. So, let's put this guy in the very back. This guy over here. Let's put an actual combat guy on the end there. Good. He gets the high ground, which means actually I probably should have a little bit more protection for him in front. Um, you can come back there. You can come in here, since I don't see any wolves up here. They're all down at the bottom. Wait, that's my hurt guy. He should not be in the front. My guys are not completely interchangeable, as much as I'd like to pretend they are. Um, so, let's step forward here. Um, you are going to rotate with that guy. But not actually use the rotate perk. All right. Obviously, the guy in the high ground is going to be the hardest to hit. We're going to hit one of these guys on the lower ground. And it doesn't matter. It's a pretty good shot. I think the pierced leg muscle makes him lower uh, melee defense. This guy needs to step back because he's not in good shape. This guy can stay here. This guy can move up. Uh, you can... No, actually, I kind of like that guy there. And then this guy could step up here. And we've got a lot of polearm support in general, although he doesn't have any, but good. I mean, he's hurt. He's kind of in the front lines, but he's a better fighter than this guy, I think, so. 
He doesn't have rotate though, but he does have a bandage. <laughs> so if he if he gets horribly hurt again, he could shoot. All right, they're gonna come in, which I don't I don't think is the wrong decision. They probably need to come in. Uh, he'll wait. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, I got a couple options here. Um, I think we'll go with this option and just try to fuck him up. Do what damage we can. He's not supposed to miss. This guy is more of a danger. I mean, he he'll be annoying. But this guy's already hurt. I don't want him to get hit more. So we're just going to hit this guy. Hey, he's got fear. That's good. I'm tempted to try to disarm this guy. Uh, he's only 61% chance to hit. Even with the cleaver perk. I mean, it's still not a great chance. Yeah, he missed. So let's stay there. Let's hit that guy. And again... Let's hit, miss him again. <laughs> this guy, if we're lucky, can kill him. Damn it. Missing all the good shots. Um, I don't know. We're gonna Actually, let's try to shield bash this guy away. All right. Do I step in there and lock these guys up and then risk him getting completely swarmed? What's his plus 14 and he's already got pretty high defense we're gonna go for it which means since i had to consider it so much it's probably the wrong decision but i don't want this guy getting swarmed this guy to me is more important than this guy we'll see how that pays off and in fact this guy can step down which will give him a place to step if he survives there's one hit Ah, but he moved away, so maybe he's not overwhelmed as much. Oh, man, he got wrecked. All right, survived that time, at least. My poor standard bearer is in trouble, and this guy is also in some trouble. Um, let's wait with him. This guy hasn't gone yet, so if I swing and kill this guy, which is unlikely, this guy could just rush in there and fill the spot, which I don't want, so... We'll wait for a turn and, and make this guy commit over here, maybe. Uh, 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 uh. Let's wait there. Okay, he's going to continue around. It's even, I don't want to say it's better, but... You guys can't miss. <laughs> we can't afford to miss right now, people. Um. Well, where is Rupert dude going to go? Uh, da -da -da -da. Rupert dude, not in good shape. My poor standard bearer is not in good shape. Actually, he could maybe kill this guy and then step away. Um, let's put a shot into that guy. Let's hit. Okay, he's fleeing at least. That's something. He's, I think, shield walling, which is where he needs to be. That's his only chance of surviving. And let's hit that guy too, I suppose. Or miss, as the case may be. Um, hmm. Um that and that <laughs> at least gets him kind of out of the danger i mean these guys could still move or this guy could f step away but ideally he won't get hit as much that doesn't mean I, that does take away my ability to swing at this guy but um yeah now the good the good news is this is not a super standard bearer so losing him isn't a huge problem, but I still would rather not. Oh, oh, that guy, however, I do kind of like. <laughs> I don't want to lose my polearm, dude, if I don't have to. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, we'll let that guy run. 
<sighs> All right. Um, he can step up here and then rotate in there. This guy is in some trouble. I don't have great options for saving him yet, especially if we're going to miss. Uh, I can shoot that guy, and then I can stab him, I guess. That's a decent hit, and he's pretty seriously injured. All right. Uh, he can pull this out because he's got quick hands and fail. Good, good. That's what I like to see. Um, all right. So one guy is fleeing. This guy at least is hurt. I don't think they're damaged enough that they're going to run away yet, unfortunately, which is my best hope. Although that probably helped a little bit. Uh, he's still shield walling. He's got plus 11. Ah, but killing him fleeing, of course, makes him come back to life so he's not fleeing anymore, which is the most frustrating thing about these guys. Um, let's come over here. That way he's putting pressure over here. If this guy comes in and takes a swing, if this guy survives, we got somebody who can fight back. Um, actually, he could step away. Do that. Oh, thank God. He'll wait. Oh, they're going for that guy. You sons of bitches. All right, well, um, I could step him through here and attack, but that's a little dangerous. I could step over here. Actually, he's got quick hands. What am I talking about? We're just going to shoot this guy. The only concern is, of course, if I shoot this guy and kill him... He's going to come back. <laughs> All right. Good. He's fleeing. Uh, that guy's fleeing. This guy's in good shape. Fleeing. But he, I knew he had berserk, so if he killed it and he was not fleeing again, he'd get to go again and would finish him. So that's good. Good. Let's swap out with you. And run him down. We should finish this guy. Da -da 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 -da. Let's, uh, I can't shoot him because I'll be in the way. I'm just waiting for it. Oh, this guy can do it. There's one more. Maybe he already fled. I don't see anybody. So we'll call it good. All right. So I was right and wrong. Um, I didn't lose anybody. I had some close calls, uh, which to me means ultimately I was probably right. It was a little too dangerous for what I, I shouldn't have taken it. But we won. We got a bunch of... Uh, these falchions, which are worth a decent amount of money. I don't know if it's going to be worth the shitload of armor repair I'm going to have to do. Uh, 28 tools, I guess, isn't so bad. No one leveled up, unfortunately. And again, we got some... What's this guy? He's at 6 health. <laughs> He's at 74, 27, 34. Yeah, we... Yeah, that was a little foolhardy. But it was fun. You know what? It was fun. I got to think hard, make some decisions, and they all paid off, so I'm going to say I'm a tactical genius. Tactical genius. Oh, hey, look at this. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> so, take contracts. doesn't say how many you're supposed to do, but this takes a while. Six armors with attachments. Maybe. Um, I mean, I guess realistically, we can get this one done pretty quickly if we just buy cheap attachments from some of the armor shops. You don't have to do ones that you make yourself. So this one is realistic. We could do this one pretty quickly. Um, have at least one famed piece of equipment. <sighs> this one's completely hit or miss. You just don't know when you're going to bump into these. I mean, they're at shops. You can buy these. They cost an incredible amount of money. Normally, unless you find like a 
a famed dagger or something, which or a famed whip, <laughs> something that, a, a pretty lame weapon. Um, I think we can do this one though. I mean, realistically, I like attachments anyway. I don't. I mean, I don't focus on them too much. They're usually for me. They're usually more important at later game. Uh, but the dire wolf pelts are good mid game, if especially if you got someone who's got a, the fearsome perk. Um, the extra padding from snow unholds and dire wolves is great for heavy armored dudes. It's probably my favorite ultimately, but we can buy some of those cheap little ones too. So we'll go with this one. I'm seeing a large amount of footsteps, which is probably too much for me to deal with right now since we're hurt and recovering. Uh, that's definitely going to be too much for us to deal with at this point. Um, so the question is, do we loop-de-loo around them, or do we run away? Well, okay, we're going to run away, but do we run away around them so we can continue on? Probably not. I probably just need to come back down. So let's head over here, and we'll cut through the mountains and go back. In fact, they'll, in some ways, that might be best since we can go to town and... Whoa! I don't want to deal with 17 dire wolves either right now. And when you see 17, that probably means there's going to be a bunch of frenzied ones, which have overwhelm and are an even bigger pain in the ass than normal. Uh, see, I'm recording this. All sorts of decision making. Now, this, this is a party we can take. It won't be exciting, so I'm not going to record it, but we're going to run these guys down. And I'll make sure this guy is out of the fight so he doesn't get shot by a marksman with a crossbow and die instantly. Mm, that guy maybe can stick around. These guys can probably stick around. All right. So I'm going to equip my guys for anti-raider fighting. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. So while this fight is not of much interest... <laughs> because um, I am just steamrolling these these bandits. Um, one of them that I killed has just risen up as a Veter Ganger. So if you're unaware, just like I said, if it's the undead crisis, there's, I don't know, some kind of extra undead magic in the air, and <laughs> randomly creatures will rise up again. I, don't, I assume they have to be human creatures. I don't know if goblins and stuff can come back, but certainly human raiders and things you fight can occasionally come back as Veter Gangers, which um, it's not not a major problem. I mean, not like they're super tough or anything, but it is a little annoying. Um, so, no, it's just good to know. Good to be prepared for. And we'll finish him off. And, yeah, moderate loot. Nothing... Nothing too special, but I wanted to continue because now we see also a legendary location here. Again, like the sunken library, some of them can be a little dangerous, but this one, if I recall, just boosts your people's morale. Yeah, so people get happy, which my guys were already pretty happy. That's why they're euphoric. We're heading over here to Falkenstein so we can sell things and make money. I will not go on turbo speed just in case. I don't think those dire wolves followed me, but just in case. Oh, look. All right, so. <clears throat> Armored Veter Gangers, ancient auxiliaries, and a few ancient legionaries. Now, we all, we've seen plenty of Veter Gangers, Armored Veter Gangers, and there's only a few, sort of like in two or three. Whatever, not, not a threat. Ancient Auxiliaries. I don't think we've faced them. I don't think I've put them on camera. I, I mean, I, obviously I've fought them. So they're pretty lame in general. I mean, they are skeletons. So just like the Ancient, Le ancient Legionaries, they have very little health. Uh, however, unlike the Ancient Legionaries, they don't have much armor. In fact, they have very little. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you just hit them with something and they shatter. But because I don't have any armor on them, which seems kind of weird because they don't get encumbered, they don't fatigue, uh, but they go first. They go, they go much faster than legionaries. So at least they can, they can sometimes go before your guys, even before you're fatigued. 
Their weapons aren't great. They've got lower tier stuff than the legionaries. However, what this looks like to me, I would guess, is going to be a wall of chump lead, uh, auxiliaries in the front, and then the few ancient legionaries are all going to be polearm pikemen in the back, which is dangerous. The good thing is we can cut through the auxiliaries pretty quickly, um, but that'll still give the legionary pikemen in the back a turn or two to focus fire on people. That's my guess. The good news is, since we're all euphoric, our guys, I mean, what's it say? 75% chance to start battle at confident morale? That's really good. <laughs> uh, confident morale will give them a boost to their uh, defense, their attack, and their resolve. The ancient, at least the ancient legionaries, and maybe the auxiliaries, have fearsome and can kind of scare your guys. All right, so let's check our gear. He's fully armored. I mean, that's fine. He's fine, fine, fine. I mean, yeah, fine. Fine. This guy is not fine. <laughs> minus 40% damage and minus hit points. But... The guys in the back rank are at much less risk of getting hit. So we're going to bring him in anyway, just so he can contribute something. Um, this guy then, this guy, there we go. Even though he's less effective, he's one less point, uh, we're going to give him this so he can smash the ancient undead, hopefully. Uh, we'll let him keep his sword. Um, again, the sword, because he's got bags and belts, doesn't take... Doesn't put any fatigue on him. And actually, if this guy has f minus 40% damage inflicted, um, he might just use the whip and disarm some of the pole arms instead. If he can't do much damage anyway, if it's Ancient Undead, minus 40% and minus whatever, because Ancient Undead are resistant to piercing, let's just disarm one of their pikes every turn. That might be a more reasonable option. These guys have flails which will be great we'll smash up anything with shields and this guy let's give him one of these light swords again he's going to just try to stay alive and tie up people all right i think we can handle this fight they're eager to come in i'm eager to kill them so ancient auxiliaries as you can see no body armor, no body armor, no body armor, head armor, or shield. This guy this guy is going to be the easiest to kill. Uh, they usually at least have a shield and a helmet. So this guy is the, the outlier. This guy doesn't have a shield either, though. So, all right. Let's wait a turn. I mean, let's finish here. But you can see, like that guy with nothing, he went pretty early. He'll wait, because my crossbowman may be able to shoot at a Veter Ganger. And like I thought, it's only two, thankfully, two pikemen. And if this guy whips one of their weapons out of their hands, we'll be getting hit with one a turn, which isn't quite so bad. Um, well, he can hit that guy. Ooh, get a start on him. All right, we are going to wait. And I'm not going to shield wall... I just want them to walk up, let me hit them, and then I get to go first next turn and hit them again. So we'll see what happens. They put their sh shieldless guys right next to my guy with the axe, who's also my most accurate. I don't think that was the best decision they could have made, but I said reload. All right, there we go. All right. <clears throat> well, this guy can defend and hold him up at least. Now, these guys are off to swing and shift up so he doesn't get caught when that guy comes around. So let's step forward and let's just hit that guy. Oh, wait. That was a mistake. He needs to try to disarm that guy. Failed. But he'll get to go first next turn. So I was hoping he would actually disarm this guy. The next turn he could step down and disarm the other one. Guess not. 
All right, let's focus fire on this guy. If we can kill this guy, and he can kill him, this guy will be able to step forward and at least start attacking directly one of these pikemen. Same thought process here. Um, you can swing at same guy, even though he's is he shield walling. Yeah, he is. But I want to kill him. All right, kill that guy. Don't hit him in the head. Look at that one shot. Took that guy out. Sixty percent chance. That fucked him up pretty good. Took his whole body armor, if he had any, I suppose, out, and almost killed him. He's shield walling. But we hurt him pretty badly. Step up. <sighs> Shield wall. <laughs> Two hits. It's annoying. Um, step up. See if he can hit. They're both 37. He's 42. Excellent. See if he can disarm that guy. We can. So we're going to move him, and next turn he'll step down and try to disarm that guy. Good. Good. Uh, he might as well step in. Step in here. If he steps down here, this guy could still swing at him. He gets a minus 15 penalty to hit. Potentially. I think these guys probably have the polearm perks. He doesn't get the penalty for being close. And he'd get bonus for having two guys next to me. If I step up here, well, I guess it's when this guy steps forward, it'll be the same. So maybe it doesn't matter after all. Uh, let's put a shot into him. Not a lot of damage, but we'll start working on his armor. Uh, I don't want to step here and swing. Actually... I mean, really, just the pikes are dangerous. Everything else here is not a threat at all. So I just disarm these guys. I can just smash them at will with everything else I've got. So let's just go to work that way. Unless that guy steps in. So he pulls his polearm back out, but that's fine. Um, these Whips have a range of three, so we can stay outside their range and just keep whipping away. Uh, and once we kill these guys, then we can switch back to pole arms and finish off whatever's left. All right. Um, keep defending. You don't have a whip yet. I think I gave him the cleaver perk? Not yet. But this guy, too, eventually even though his melee skill isn't great. This is why it is useful to have a guy with good melee skill here. Uh, he could switch to a whip, if he had quick hands, disarm one of these guys, and then switch back and pull the banner out. Continue to inspire people, but he's contributing to the fight. Uh, step up here. Shoot that guy. Step back. I mean, I have to kill this guy, I suppose. I have to kill this guy. Um, he's turn seven. He's going in five turns. I mean, yeah. I could whip him and try to kill him, but... In fact, let's just do both. There we go. <laughs> I made sure he was disarmed, and then... I went for it. Good. Let's finish this guy. I said, let's finish that guy. Step down and whack him. Everyone's failing. Why do you suck so much, people? All right. Yeah. All right. Continue blocking. Actually, I actually don't think this guy's even attacking. I think he's attacking him <laughs> because this guy's so hard to hit. Get that guy out. Let's hit that guy. Um, he's going in six, he's going in seven, he's going in four. He can wait. And let's disarm him again. All right. I might as well whip him. 
because he's not going to be able to swing his polearm yet. Good. And now I can get to work. Should be pretty straightforward now. They don't give up, but it doesn't matter. They're going to die. With the whip. Whip it good. So, pretty straightforward, but we got to see whips in action. Um, like I said, I think whips for your, especially for the guys in the back, are your polearm dudes, are is pretty handy. Um, I've always considered, though, I mean, why not, why not put them on some of your guys in the front? Realistically, though, if you've got a, a guy who is a great melee weapon skill, good fatigue, so he's got a lot of armor, good defensive skill, um, I'm not going to give him a whip to disarm somebody. I'm just going to have him smash things, I think, most of the time. And then my slightly less elite characters, like those guys in the back that are pole arms, they've got great melee skill. That's it. <laughs> if they had great fatigue, great health, great defense, uh, they would be they would be in another role. And even they have to have a high melee skill to be effective at disarming people. So my dudes in the front typically can't fill that role either because their their odds of disarming someone is pretty slim. So um, the guys in the back as pole arms are the most natural fit for that. But you can see it, it is kind of handy. You can shut down the major threats. Those guys aren't major threats, but they're pretty annoying. Now, now you consider instead of shutting those guys down, if I'm shutting down a Barbarian Chosen, if I'm shutting down a Hedge Knight, if I'm shutting down an Orc Warrior, an Orc Berserker, um, suddenly I'm shutting down something that's incredibly dangerous, and I can either focus fire and kill it before it can... Uh, become a major threat, or like in this particular case, um, well, actually, that's kind of what I did here. I shut the pikemen down while I killed them, but I could shut them down and have killed everything else first and then focused on them. So uh, consider whips. Consider disarming your opponents. Uh, killing things can take multiple turns. Disarming something for a turn is pretty easy most of the time. So uh, it's a, a useful tool. And a, it's really... Unlike some things like fearsome, scaring your opponents, there are certain enemies that you can't you can't scare. Um, there are certain enemies you can't disarm, mostly beasts that, that don't have a weapon. Um, but overall, disarming things is pretty effective. Most things that can hurt you, most things that are very powerful, they can hurt you instantly, are either really big creatures like unholds or lindworms uh, or legendary creatures. Or are humans with big weapons, and you can at least counter those guys. So consider it, use whips, and uh, whip it good. Have fun.